Hey coach, I think you and Colorado are the first team in the conference to reach 10 wins this season. Can you kind of give me what, what you're happy with so far this season and what you need to improve on down the stretch? You know, I wasn't even really aware that it was 10. I think Andrew told me after the game and I was like, oh, that's cool. I don't know if Colorado cares any more about the 10 than we do, other than that's a good building block to get into the last half of the season, the last quarter of the season. We had some success, we've learned a lot from that, and we've also took two losses at the beginning of the year that taught us a lot about you know, who we don't want to be. We haven't lost since August 25th. How do you avoid complacency going into the rest of the year? I just think that's that's the job of leadership. You know, the coaches can preach it, but the you know when you've got com leaders as competitive as Macy Blackburn and Elise Anderson and you know Cassie Taylor and uh, you know Faith and I mean it just the list kind of goes on and on. You know Ashley Williams is a big burning ball of fire, you know inside of her calm exterior, but uh, when you when you're just driven to succeed you generally don't get too complacent. And that's the way these guys are. Can you talk about the uh, health of the team overall and how you can keep that, maintain that health and avoid injuries on the stretch? Yeah, I would love to have that answer. That'd be the, that's the million dollar question. I think the biggest thing is we turn over all of our kind of time on task, length of training, training session loads to our sports performance team. And there's, you know, Katie Munger, DJ Clark, Matt Robinson, and they're coordinating and collaborating every single day as to how much each player needs, can handle, should have, and uh, we trust them explicitly. And so they set the table for that, and we fill in the blanks with what we're going to do at practice, you know, from a technical standpoint. Obviously, Colorado's 10 wins. What things about them, and what matchups are really going to be key in this game? I think there's a few things. One is, you know, they're athletic, they're big and strong, they're well organized, well coached. But the other thing is, you know, they just came in from one of the best conferences in the country. They're playing Stanford UCLA every single year. So they're not phased by West Virginia. They're not really, well, we might have been a little phased by the results against TCU, but I think, you know, they won't be phased long term as they get to know everyone in this conference. And I think, you know, they're not phased by us. They're just, they're just a team that's been in a lot of big games. So they bring experience uh, playing good teams into, into our conference. And so I think that they're, uh, you know, they're new, which is an advantage and a disadvantage depending on what you make of it for us to them and them to us. So we'll see who takes advantage of that. Tomorrow. With Senior Day on, on Sunday, uh, what are these seniors like Elise and Ashley and Caitlin meant to this team? Um, everything. I mean, they came right on the heels of, of COVID and dealt with some of that with us. You know, the fallout from that was tough, and we had a ton of kids get hurt during that same year, and so they were part of what shouldn't have been a rebuild, but it felt like one. And then once we got everybody healthy again, they've reaped the benefits of it and have been you know, standouts for us. I mean, I'm so thankful at least came back for her fifth year. We'll obviously be asking Caitlin to do the same, but you know, this is it for Crunch, which is unfortunate, this is it for Ashley. Uh, we'll have to say goodbye to them for sure. And uh, it'll be tough, they're not really replaceable, um, but their imprint here will be everlasting. What do you want all them to take away from their experience at Tech? I just hope when they are old and gray and have a couple kids that they just wax fondly about their time here. You know, it's not just the team, although that's been the heart and soul of their experience. It's the athletic department, it's the university, it's Lubbock, it's West Texas. It just keeps going out from the team. And because I think they had such a good experience with the team, well, the rest of those things look even shinier than maybe they are. And uh, I think that, you know, their enthusiasm for Red Raider athletics is high. And so I just hope that they feel like they made friends for life and were treated with respect and had experience of a lifetime. These freshmen who are either not playing or in a rotational role like Peyton Dice, what do you want them to really take away from a development standpoint while they're sitting and learning from these other players? The biggest thing is to, to, to take away their habits. You know, what do the upperclassmen do for taking care of themselves nutritionally, sleep science, you know, how do they prioritize their life? How do they find balance in their life so soccer can have to be a huge priority? Because when you learn the ways of being a good college player, when you understand how what all that takes, man, you're a step ahead. Even if you're uber talented, if you don't know how to take care of yourself, it's a mess. Academically, got to be on, you got to be on track. Can't procrastinate. Got to get your work done so that anxiety doesn't carry over to the field. So when they see all of our team, I think handling their business, then it's a step up. And Dias is balancing also. That you're right. She's played a lot of minutes. She's already scored a goal. She's somebody that we're counting on in the future. I mean, she looks like a future outside back for the Red Raiders. Lastly, for me, same thing for Iowa State. For what about them? What's that? For Iowa State, same, what, what's about, same bad about them? I think the number one thing is they've just been an absolute pain in our butt every time we played them. I think one time we, we put up a big number on them here. But every time there and every other time here, they are just a pain. They're good on the ball. Their coach is smart. You can't, they're not getting tricked. They fight to the end of the season no matter what place they're in. So they're just annoyingly hard to play against. And uh, we take it very seriously because we've never really had these big blowout games against them like maybe some other.
other teams have, you know, we've got to be on our game or we know they'll they'll wreck your season. And uh, they, I think they enjoy doing that to people, so we have to be aware. All right. Um, you've passed the halfway point of the Big 12 season. What do you want to see your team improve on these final five matches, and what has surprised you? I think that what we need to see is that we kind of come into this ro rotation and come into this fold of, okay, this looks like who we're going to be. Let's lock into that. Let's not venture too far outside of that. Let's be that team. And it looks like we're really committed to defending. We're scrappy as heck in our own box. We're getting great goalkeeping and great center back play defensively. And that kind of emanates out to the, the rest of the defensive organization. So it looks like we're a real scrappy defensive team. It also looks like we're a team that's possession team still at work. We're still under progress to get to be the possession team that we want to be. Um, and that's fine because there's room. And every time we get better at it, then every result will be easier and better. So I think that we're still coming of age. I think what surprised me was how rough the beginning was and how well they kind of circled the wagons. They just weren't going to be that team. They weren't going to be soft. They weren't going to be unorganized. And even though losing, you know, Kylie Macy and Sam was a pain, uh, we rebounded nicely. Um, not going to be the same without Sam in our midfield, but look how good our midfield's playing. And I'm so proud of those guys for what they're doing. And so I think it's uh, the surprise. You know, it's, it's not really a surprise as much as it is an admiration uh, how quickly they came together. Maybe the surprise was the timeline. They came together pretty quick. And now it's like, dang, they've made up for the players we've lost and then some. And uh, what problems do Colorado pose tomorrow night? Again, as we talked about, they're not uh, afraid of big games. They understand big moments. They've played all the best teams in the country throughout the years. They've won a bunch of them. They're big, strong, athletic, pretty direct, can score off crosses and set pieces. There are people that say that's all they care about are set pieces. I think that's naive. They're very good at set pieces, but they, they care about more than that. Um, and a good coaching staff. I just think it's going to be a heck of a Big 12 showdown and uh, a bit of a heavyweight bout, to be honest. I'm glad we're here. When you look at, I guess, how this team has come together, like you mentioned, where would you assess where you're at in the Big 12 and the opportunities that lie with, you know, three more home games, only five games remaining, and, you know, the team that you're tied with at the top still on the schedule? Yeah, I think that we have always looked at it as, and it's very cliche, but the next game is all that matters, okay. But if the team accepts that, then you get towards the end of the season and you've taken accounting of what you've accomplished, and if you've got a shot to play for something at the end, then you go for it. But otherwise, it's really about trying to get to November. It's really trying to win every game at home and be competitive on the road. And after being a, you know, not a great road team to begin with, we ended up being a pretty good road team so far. So we look forward to getting to West Virginia. I mean, said no one ever, but they're a great team and a great field and a great stadium. There'll be a crowd. I mean, who wouldn't look forward to that? Everybody hates playing in BYU. We loved it, you know, because it's an environment. It's college athletics. So I think that's our team's kind of mentality, like they enjoy the road, but there's nothing like playing here. And uh, our crowd will be big and obnoxious and all the things Red Raider fans are tend to be in a good way. And so we look forward to that. You touched upon it Friday night, Thursday night crowds here at Walker tend to be different. You had a huge crowd last Friday night against Baylor. What's your message to Red Raider Nation and how, how important would a big crowd be tomorrow night? Yeah, just keep coming out and appreciate the fact that it's a big night in sport for us with the soccer team headlining Thursday night. And uh, they make a difference. They make a difference. The SA fraternity was out, other groups were out. You know, Nicole Payne's done a great job collecting these groups. We got the whole entire rec department, and their staff coming out. We got Lake Ridge coming out. We got a bank or two coming out. And they make a difference. I mean, they do. The louder they are, the better it is, the more uh, kind of enthused we are. It makes it harder for the girls to hear us, but, you know, we'll take the bad with the good on that one. The girls probably enjoy that part of it anyway. Casey, what did you show the coaching staff that you think made you uh, earn time, so, sorry, time to early in your career? Um, yeah, I think it's interesting you say early in my career because this is my third year, but kind of a sophomore too. Um, I think every year it's hard to fight for playing time, but and every girl works so hard out there. So every week you definitely have to prove yourself and just a lot of persistence and consistency. Um, but I'm grateful to have a lot of teammates that make me better every week too. So got a credit to them as well. What was the biggest focus in your offseason to get better? Um, I think just putting in the extra time. So obviously the spring, it looks a lot different than the fall, but you know, whether that's an off day or staying early or staying late, coming early, um, any extra reps definitely helped. I think. Was it all just shooting and passing? What kind of was that? Um, anything really. I mean, there's always something to improve in my game. And I think you can say that about everybody. I definitely have my strengths and weaknesses, but 
you know, if that's dribbling, just putting a couple cones out, getting some shots in, um, you know, I don't, definitely think it won't hurt. <laughs> Was there a coach on the team that really helped you a lot, and how did it help you? Um, that's hard. I think all of them. I've worked with each of them. I mean, last spring I got to come to some of the goalie individual trainings. I'd work with Blair. Tom and Nick would help me come early. You know, sometimes my class schedule isn't <laughs> the best with yeah. practice. And with the addition of Charlotte, um, it's really been grateful to have those options um, from all four of them. So, every single one of How did you overcome that injury you had your freshman year and kind of find your best form now? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's been a hard journey for sure. Um, last year, I think definitely wasn't where I thought I would be, but being able to just keep pushing. Um, Unfortunately, a lot of the girls go through injury and having each other to lean on is a big support and it helps a lot just being surrounded by like a second family. Um, so, yeah. How has the offense kind of rounded into form so far in the big ball play? Obviously, you guys haven't lost yet. Talk about that. Uh, say that one more time. Um, how do you think the offense kind of rounded into form with you, Ashley, Story, all those players coming in conference play? Obviously, yeah. you guys haven't uh, scored every single game except PCU. Talk about that. Yeah, I mean, our offense, we have so many different weapons. It's, it's really cool. Um, I love cheering on every single one of my teammates. You know, if I'm not on the field, even if I am, I want everyone to succeed out there. And being able to play with each of them, I think we make really good pairings um, with the two forwards up top, whether it's with the midfield. Um, but I think we got a lot of depth on our team, and it helps a lot definitely in our offense. What do you think has been your best moment so far this season? My best moment? Yeah. Oh, that's hard. You know, I hope my best moment is still to come. Um, we still got plenty of games left, and hopefully in the postseason. So I hope I don't know what my best.